All right, welcome back. Here we go. We're going to find the point that passes through, I'm oh, sorry, the slope of the line passes through those two points there. Okay, so because they gave me some points, I can find out the slope or the change from one point to the next by using my regular formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. All right, so here's my y1 and my x1 and my y2 and my x2. I'm going to plug those values in. So y1 is a minus 3 minus 2 over a minus 5 minus a minus 3. That becomes plus plus. And so my slope from 1 to the next, negative 3 <laughs> minus 2 is minus 5. And minus 5 plus 3 happens to be a minus 2. The negatives will cancel each other out. And I'm left with a slope of 5 over 2. Okay, so that's my slope. Now if I'm going to graph this here, uh, which they gave me a graph, just graph the line and name one other point on the line. Let me go ahead and graph these points real quick. So I have negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 3, 1, 2, 3. I have a point there. I also have 1, 2, negative 3, and up 2 right there. If I take my line and draw a line here. I might be able to find another point on that line just by drawing it. But there's another thing I can do as well. If you want to find uh, you know, a point that matches for sure. What you could do is you can take a point. Let's take this one here. I have my x value, my y value at negative 3 and I have a 2. Right? That's my point. My slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. So if you notice, my y value is going to go, it's going to increase by 5. So if my y value increases by 5, 2 plus 5 is 7. <laughs> and my x value increases by 2. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So another point I could have on this line by using my slope and then breaking it apart and adding it to the existing point is negative 1 comma 7. Now if I look here, I have negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is up here, right? Because if I followed my slope up, I could do it just by hand. I could go 1, 2, go this way, the green. I can go, my slope is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, 2, I end up with that same point. And my line, if I continue to there, would just continue on and connect that as well. So I could do it one of two ways. I could just use the slope that's given to me and go up one, two, three, four, five, and over two and arrive at that third point. Or I could add it together and say, oh, let's find it. It's negative one comma seven. I could draw my line and see where it crosses. I'd recommend you find the right one just in case your line is not too straight. Okay, so there's number 11. Number 12, there we go. We have write the equation of the line that passes through negative 820 and is perpendicular to y equals 4x plus 3. And we also want to put it in slope intercept form. So perpendicular tells me I'm going to end up with the opposite of this guy, inverse opposite. So instead of a slope of 4, I'm going to put a slope of negative 1 over 4. That's going to be a perpendicular line to that one. I also know it needs to go through that point. So I know my slope is m, and I have a point, negative 8, comma 20. I want it in slope-intercept form. And we remember back, slope-intercept form is which form? Remember? Let's look back on page 1. We said slope-intercept form was going to be, here it is, sorry, y equals mx plus b. So I want to put it in that form there. It didn't come in that form. But that's all right. It came with a point. So let's start with point slope form. And we have y minus, remember y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. See, they gave me a point, so I want to go ahead and use it. So let's use it. y minus, we have 20, equals my new slope, which we said is perpendicular. So negative 1 fourth times x minus my x1 value, a negative 8. 
not done yet because I want it in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So I gotta keep going. Y minus 20 equals negative 1 fourth x. I'm gonna distribute, distribute. Negative 1 fourth, this is actually a plus now. Negative 1 fourth times 8 becomes, I have a minus 8 fourths. All right, so just multiplying it there. I'm gonna reduce in just a second. So I bring it down, y minus 20 equals negative 1 fourth x minus 8 fourths is actually minus 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. I'm going to put the 20 on the other side by adding 20, adding 20, and I end up with y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 18. And I'll write that over here so you can see a little clearer. So y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 18. Now I'm in point slope 4. The, point, the, the uh, line will pass through that point and it's also perpendicular because it's the, uh, the inverse of what was given to me. Okay. Number 13. Change the slope intercept, sorry, change to slope intercept form the graph of 3x minus 9y equals 18. It's given to me in standard form and I want it in slope intercept form. Again, that y equals mx plus b form is what I'm looking for there. So I'm going to have to just move things around is all I'm asked, being asked to do. So let's rewrite it. 3x minus 9y equals 18. Let's go ahead and get the x on the other side. So we have 9y, sorry, not y, 9y minus 3x plus 18. I just basically subtract the 3x from both sides. I'm um, not done yet because I want the y by itself. So to do that, I'm going to divide everything. I'll do each part, divide everything by a negative 9 to get the y by itself. Negative 9, negative 9. This becomes simply y. Negative 3 divided by a negative 9 becomes a positive 1 third x. And a positive 18 divided by a negative 9 becomes a negative 2. So now I have my slope of y equals negative 1 third minus two. But when I graph that again, easy way to graph it, x, y, I can say what's x equal to zero, what's y equal to zero. When x is zero, this becomes zero, and I'm left with negative two. When y is zero, I end up with zero equals one third x minus two. I add two to both sides and 2 equals 1 third x. I will multiply both sides by 3 over 1. <laughs> 3 over 1. 3 times 2 is 6. These cancel, so 6 equals x. So now I have another point of 6 comma 0. So on my graph, I have 0 comma 1, 2, negative 2, and I have the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here as well. And I'm good to go. And I can use my card and graph that like so. And that's number 13. So we changed it to point slope form, and we found two points, and we graphed it. Now, you don't have to use those points. If you wanted to use the number 1 or something else, you certainly could. Um, I just noticed that this was a small little grid and thought, well, let's just find the ones that are right there. Easy enough. Okay, number 14. 14 says, find the x and y intercepts and graph 2x plus 4y equals 12. So very similar to what we just did. Um, doesn't even want me to find the slope, just says find the x and y intercepts. So all I'm asking has to do is to say, let's go x and y, make a t-chart. When x is 0, what will y be? When y is 0, what will x be? That's all I'm being asked to do. So when x is 0, we have 2 times 0 plus 4y equals 12. That goes away. 4y equals 12. We divide both sides by 4. And y equals 3. When y is 0, we have 2x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. That goes away. So 2x equals 12. Divide both sides by 2 and x equals 6. 
So we have 0, 3, and 6, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plot them here. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 6 there, and x goes up 0. So those are my two points. And so I can now go ahead and graph that. And I'm good to go. All right. So there's number 14. Number 15 asks you to write the equation of the line in point slope form with slope m equals negative 3 passing through a point 2, comma, uh, negative 1. Point slope form, again, is going to be the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right? And if you remember, um, one of the things your teachers might have talked about was that if they give you a slope and they give you a point, you're going to take those points and make them the opposite, make them the opposite, and you're set to go. So what we mean by that is we say y minus a minus 1. We could do minus. We could go ahead and just do it if you want to. <laughs> Plug it in, y minus minus 1, don't forget that, equals, my slope is minus 3 times x minus, and my value here is 2. All right, so we have y becomes plus 1 equals negative 3 times x minus 2. Now, I'm not done because it wants it in point slope form. Oops, no, I am done. Sorry about that. Point slope form. I'm all good there. Oh, almost. Uh, yeah, we're good. We don't have to distribute, so we're okay. We have y plus, oh, sorry, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Sorry about that. So we're all good there, and we can actually stop at that point right there for number 15. Um, that's it. So we're good. Easy. Number 16. Um, let's go ahead and look at 16. It says to graph y equals x plus 1. But it's the absolute value of x plus 1. The values I like to use, and I saw some of you guys in your class doing this here, and there's a couple ways, so if your teacher has a great way, go ahead and use that here. I'll just show you how I typically do mine. I usually select three values, negative 1, a 0, and a 1. That way I'm not doing crazy math problems, <laughs> okay? So basically I'm going to do three different equations to solve this here, and I'm going to plug it in. So if x is negative 1, I end up with y equals the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1. Well, the neg absolute value of negative 1 is going to be, let me zoom in here a little bit here, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1 <laughs> plus 1, last time I checked was 2. So at negative 1, y is equal to 1, 2. All right, on the next one, I have y equals the absolute value of 0 plus 1. Well, absolute value of 0 is still 0, plus 1 is still 1. So when x equals 0, y equals 1. And our last one, y equals the absolute value of 1 plus 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. So when x is 1, y is 2. And this is one where we end up with just this nice little straight V because absolute values tend to give you the little Vs. And we have one that goes this way. And we have one that goes this way. And we're set to go. I should just stop there. Sorry about that. And we're good to go. So there's that one. When I look at the next one, number 17, I can see that now they put the plus one inside of the absolute value. If you remember, when the number is outside the absolute value, it's going to cause a vertical shift in your graph up and down. In this case, because the plus 1 is going to push that graph up one point from the origin. When I put a variable or a number, sorry, inside the absolute value of the x, it's going to cause a shift in my graph left and right. If it's a positive number, what you'll find out is it tends to go to the left. If it's a negative, it tends to go to the right. Okay, so let's just do it real quick. I have x and I have y and make my t-chart and I have a negative 1 and a 0 and a 1 just because those are the ones I typically like to do. Sometimes I do more, but that's just what helps me out. So 
I'm going to just pretend I have a y there. So let's do the absolute value of x is negative 1 plus 1. Absolute value. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. So at negative 1, we happen to be at 0. There we are. At 0, we end up with the absolute value of 0 plus 1 which happens to be absolute value of 1, which is still 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, I get the absolute value of 1 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So at 1, we're at 2. Well, I can see right now I don't have my v, which I should have a v if I'm using that absolute value, shouldn't I? So let's go ahead and plot one more point so we can get the v going the right way. I'm going to plot a negative 2 and see if we start going back up the other direction. So the absolute value of negative 2 plus 1, negative 2 plus 1 happens to be a negative 1, but because I want the absolute value of negative 1, I end up with just 1. So at negative 2, I'm at y equals 1. So I can see that right now I have my z. All right. I could continue this and move that along that way, not a big deal, and continue to move there, and off we go. All right, that's number 17. Okay, a couple more here. Number 18. It says the height h in inches of a tree is given by h equals 2m plus 7, where m equals months. What is the y-intercept, and what does it represent? All right, so even though I don't have an x and a y, if this was x and y and I rewrote it, it would look like y equals 2x plus 7. And looking at this, I'm in slope-intercept form. So my y-intercept is my b value. Remember, y equals mx plus b. So all I'm going to look at is, oh, there it is, plus 7. That's my y-intercept. That's easy enough. But it wants to also know what does it represent. And this is where we have to use some language to write about this here. It says we're talking about a tree. The important thing here is that a tree doesn't start off at necessarily zero. In this case here, it says we're going to measure the height of the tree, and it's going to grow a certain amount every, every month. Okay? So each month, it's going to be at a certain height. So as, it, as the time goes on, it tends to grow and grow and grow. But 7 happens to be the starting value of what, what our tree is going to be. Okay, So in this case here, if I had a graph, and I was graphing this out, because my y-intercept is at 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, point there, this is my, these are inches here, and this over here would be uh, months. At 0 months, my tree is 7 inches tall. I'm good with that. So at zero months, my tree is seven inches tall. That means we're starting with a tree that's already this tall. Okay. Now after month number one, month one, if I plug it in here, I get two times one plus seven. And so this is two plus seven equals nine. So boom, boom, after one month, we're going to grow a little bit. So we're going to go up two more inches. What we're saying there, what it represents is, this is the starting height of the tree. When I began to measure it, I started it at 7 inches. That's all that it means. You have to have a place where it begins. It didn't start at 0, and I mean, at some point it was a seed, I'm sure, but when they started measuring it, they're saying, we're going to start at 7 inches and go from there. Okay, number 19. 19 is a little different. Okay, it's a little word problem here. And what it wants you to do is it says, the club sold hamburgers, X, for three dollars and hot dogs y for two fifty. They raised two hundred and forty dollars. Write an equation to find out how many of each item was sold. What are the three combinations of hamburgers and hot dogs the club can buy for two dollars and for two hundred and forty dollars? Graph label each axis appropriately. So let's go ahead and label it right away. We have uh, hamburgers is my x value. So I'm gonna go ahead and just label down here. This is gonna be my hamburger side of my my graph. So I'm going X and Y here. My hot dog side, put it over here. 
dogs are my Y. And that's going to be my going up part in there. So we're in good shape here. My equation for this problem, I can write that out by saying that it's going to be a hot dog is $3 times however many I sell, X, I don't know how many I'm going to sell yet, plus my cost for hot dogs, which is 2 5 Did I say hot dogs before? I don't remember. So hamburgers is $3 times however many I sell, plus the price of the hot dogs, $2.50, you can use the zero or not, times however many hot dogs I sell, is going to equal how much money I raised, 240 Okay? Those are my x and y values. Remember before, for finding the x and y intercept, I could set x equal to zero, I can set y equal to zero, and I can at least find at what number, uh, sorry, I can find out, okay, how many hot dogs would I have to sell if I only sold hot dogs to get $240, and I can also find out how many uh, hamburgers could I sell if I only sold hamburgers to get $240. That's essentially what we're looking for. So if X is zero, which means I sold no hamburgers, only hot dogs, plus 2.5Y equals 240, if I sold no hamburgers and only hot dogs, how many hot dogs do I have to sell to make $240? I'm going to divide both sides by 2.5, 2.5, and I find out that Y, in this case here, is going to equal 96. So if I sold no hamburgers, I would have to sell 96 hot dogs in order to make my 240 mark. I can do the same over here with the other way. I could say, all right, how many hamburgers do I have to sell if I'm not able, 2.5 times zero, to sell any hot dogs and still end up with 240? So I don't sell any hot dogs, just hamburgers. 3x equals 240. I divide both sides by 3, and x equals 80. Okay, so what we're saying is this. That for the hamburgers, this is my x value, when hamburgers are at 80, my hot dogs are at zero. So I have to look at this lovely little chart here, and I don't know why I missed a line, but there's a line missing. So let's go and add it real quick. There it is. And I have to kind of look at this graph and say, well, let's make it to a scale of some sort and figure out how I want this to be. I have 80 to 96. I have, uh, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I can make each one equal to 10, and that's 80, and put a point right there. For my hot dogs, I can sell 96 when x is, x is 0. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90 is here. 100 is here. So 96 is kind of in the middle there, a little bit higher. Now, there will be a range of things I could sell. I could sell some hot dogs and some hamburgers and still end up with... $240. That's the next part of the question they're asking me for is what other combination, because what are three combinations you could have where you would still get 240 as a solution? All right. So what you want, might want to look at is, well, looking at my graph, at what point does it cross another line on the graph? It appears to me that it crosses right here at this point. All right. So there might be another value right there, which is at 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 hamburgers, I don't know, 3 times 40, and I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 hot dogs plus 2.5 times 50 hot dogs equals 240. I don't know if that works. I'm actually just guessing and working on my head. There wasn't an easy way to figure it out. Um, ones you'll do later on have better graphs, and you can easily see visually where they cross, so you'll be okay. This is 120, I know. And then 50 times 2.5 is 125. So that right there is 245, so it's not quite right. So that's not going to be a point, but that's where you'll have a little better graph when you do your test, and you'll be able to see where does it cross a line at. Maybe I could say maybe it's this one here. Maybe it's 30. So 3 times 30 plus uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So 2.5 times 60. Let's see, that becomes 90 plus... 2.5 times 60 is 150, and that is 240. Huh, so what do you know? So this becomes another point right there. So 
So another option could be 30 hamburgers. This is at point 30, comma, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 60 um, hot dogs. So again, your graph will be a little bit bigger, bigger squares, and you'll be able to figure that out a lot easier than I just did. <laughs> Lucky you. All right, number 20. Number 20. Almost done here, guys. We have two more to go. Number 20. Is each of the following a linear function? You have to explain whether it's a linear function or not. In this case here, I see that I have something that is cubed. A cubic function is not going to be linear, so we would say no. Those tend to be a little more like slopey like this and kind of curvy. In this case here, I could change things around um, to find out what the value would be, but because I'm just dealing with an X and a Y value, not a big deal. If I moved it around, this is going to be uh, you know, a yes. I could probably rewrite this and make a, uh, a 3Y add 9 to both sides equals X plus 9, divide both sides by uh, 3 to get the Y by itself, and you end up with Y equals 1 third X plus 3. That looks like what we've been working on, so yes, this is going to be a linear function. When you're talking about an absolute value, those tend to be what? We said before, Vs. So because it's a V, uh, yeah, it's a line here and a line there, but it's not one continuous line. So this would be a no. And this, again, is in standard form. So we're also, if we change it around a little bit, yes, you're going to get a line there as well. Our last one, finally, for the day, find the equation line that passes through the points 3, 5, and 6, 13. Write your equation in slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form is going to be y equals mx plus b. They gave me two points, so I can find the change from one point to the other. That would be my y1 minus my y2 over x1 minus x2. Plug my points in there. So y1, and again, it doesn't matter which one I call. I can call this my y1 for now and my x1, y2, x2, because I'm learning, oh, it's easier that way. 13 minus 5, there to there. And then 6 minus 3 in the bottom, there to there. 13 minus 5 is 8. And 6 minus 3 is 3. So my slope, my m, is 8 thirds. Now I need to find out my values. They gave me points. I can use whatever point I want. I could start with my point slope form and do y minus, let's use 3 and 5, y minus 5 equals my slope, 8 thirds, times x minus 3. Use the distributed property because I want to get it in that form. And I have y minus 5 equals 8 thirds x. 8 thirds times a minus 3. The 3s are going to cancel each other out there. And I'm left with just a negative 8. Good news for me. I add 5 to both sides. And y will equal 8 thirds x. And then negative 8 plus a 5 minus 3. And now I have it in point slope form, or sorry, slope intercept form. And we're all done. So state the slope, which I did right here, and the y-intercept, the y-intercept, because I'm in slope point form, I'm sorry, in point slope intercept form, is going to be negative 3. And those are the three parts for that one. Okay, guys, good luck on your test. Hope that helps, and have a great day.